What are the possibilities of us transforming ourselves and transforming our world so that we live in really (laughs) the Eden that this world could be? Welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. On the show, it's my job to tease out the creative solutions my guests are coming up with to change the world through creativity, social action, and mindset. I also give you tips and techniques so you can do the same. This episode is brought to you by my class, Meditation for Busy People, where you'll learn how to relieve stress and discover clarity and joy in just five minutes a day. It's also brought to you by the Brain FM app and this podcast host, Podbean. Also, follow the podcast on Instagram or TikTok and check out our shop for merch, music, and musings. The links are all in the show notes. Hey there, and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you for being here. Today, we have reached the end of the 10 episode series, Veganism and the environment. And it's also another ending. I am going to be shuttering this Friday episode. Uh, It's, I I will be very honest with you, it's a lot of work to do (laughs) two episodes of this, plus an episode of the State of the Arts podcast with my co-hosts, Alan Fessenden, Sergio Giovanni, and Megan Vasilis. And I've just started The Taste of New York, which is all about cool stuff to do, see, taste, and experience in New York City. And I went, you know what? I Something has to go. And much as I love these Vegan Life Solutions episodes, I kind of had to go, okay, what is it that you're trying to do? And I've realized that what I want to do with veganism in my life in general is I want to stop talking about it as a separate thing. It's part of my life experience. It's part of my work experience. It's part of my experience of living in New York City. And so that is a lot of what's happening here. And that is whenever I'm talking about restaurants or places to go where there's going to be food, I'm always going to be talking about them being vegan and highlighting the vegan things. And it's going to be part of the Taste of New York podcast. And that's how it's going to be from now on is whenever I want to talk about that aspect of my life and my work, it's going to be part of that show. And it will be back as far as creative solutions, especially when I interview and work with people who are pushing some of those amazing limits as far as pushing the envelope when it comes to taste and uh, of availability of and ubiquity, if you will, of vegan products. Like, for example, uh, Ben and Jerry's is coming out with more and more tasty flavors. They're the vegan versions of their non-vegan ice creams. My favorite is still probably always going to be Chunky Monkey, and they stopped making that one a long time ago. But, you know, there are others that are really delicious. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking about is I want to talk about this stuff. And you should always know that whenever I'm talking about any sort of a restaurant or any sort of a dining or food experience, for me, it's always going to be vegan. When you get my recommendations, they're always going to be plant based. That's just how it is. So I feel like I don't need specifically a Friday episode about this because it's going to be infusing everything that I am and everything that I do. Everything you hear from me is going to be through that lens. So I wanted to sort of make sure that you understood that as I'm talking about this and as I'm doing this 10th episode of Veganism and the Environment. As we've explored throughout this series, veganism offers a really powerful solution to address pressing environmental challenges that we are all facing. And I just read a thing in the Washington Post today that says that one of the main currents in the Atlantic Ocean, potentially in the next few decades, is going to stop. And it is the current that brings salt water up, warm salt water up from the tropics to the northern Atlantic. And the influx, the you know, global warming and the influx of the fresh water coming down from the polar ice cap, it's potentially going to change it all. And it's not going to be, there's a movie that was out a few years ago called The Day after tomorrow, which is what happens when this huge uh, method that the Atlantic Ocean uses as far as currents and tides uh, suddenly goes boom. And it said, you know, basically a huge ice age descended on the northern hemisphere and they're going, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be as bad as that, but it's going to be bad. And so what we need to do is prepare for it. And they're like, we've we've hit the, that point where in the few decades and it could be as soon as 10 years from now, this thing stops because there's so much fresh water coming down as the as the ice caps melt. 
uh, we're going to have trouble <laughs> and we're already in trouble, but we're going to have even more bigger storms, especially along the east coast of the USA. We're going to have huge differences in how cool it is in the northern hemisphere versus how hot it is towards the equator. There are going to be all sorts of potential issues with this. And veganism plays a role because as part of veganism, uh, the, the tenets of veganism is do no harm, right? And animal agriculture plays such a huge role in the release of these greenhouse gases like methane, like carbon dioxide, that when we start talking about embracing more plant-based, more vegan options, yes, of course, we are ceasing the cruelty against millions of animals every year, no question. And there are other benefits here. And I want to say that to anybody who's listening, if you're listening and you're going, no, veganism is only about animal rights. I think in my mind, it is definitely, obviously, primarily about saving and keeping from harm and keeping from pain and keeping from suffering billions of animals. And there are other benefits that other people might not understand or realize as they're looking into what veganism is all about. And if we curtail the animal agriculture industry, we will help the environment as well. And I wanted to sort of talk about that because some of these environmental challenges are going to get just huge if we're not if we're not really uh, careful and if we don't take pretty immediate action. So this isn't just about a dietary choice. It's a pathway that leads towards healing ecosystems and building a more resilient planet. You know, if we're talking about saving, uh, you know, providing a good good sort of life experience for our children and our children's children, well, mitigating climate change is about the best thing that you can do. And uh, going towards plant-based or vegan lifestyle is right up there with mitigating climate change. It's, it is the thing that will help so much when it comes to uh, the release of those greenhouse gases. So these are things that we have to look at as we're moving forward, because if we don't, we're not going to leave much for our children. Let's just call it what it is. So I want to shift gears just a little bit. And I, I, I want I want you to imagine a world where our food choices align with the health of the planet. It's it's like a gorgeous tapestry where every thread contributes to the greater whole. And veganism in this tapestry acts as a really vibrant thread because it weaves through the fabric of ecological sustainability and conservation. Every thread in a tapestry is going to play a crucial role in creating this beautiful thing, but our individual choices to embrace a vegan plant-based lifestyle can collectively create that sustainable world that I was just talking about. So when we choose veganism, we're choosing and making a conscious decision to minimize our ecological footprint. Animal agriculture, as I've talked about so much, is a leading driver of deforestation, which of course, more greenhouse gases because there's not as much carbon dioxide fixation because there aren't as many plants, water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions. And by transitioning to a vegan diet and lifestyle, we can significantly reduce our impact on the environment and, and help restore balance to all of these different ecosystems and biomes. And that's the point is that we, we are, we humans are, I don't care what anybody else says, the data says that we are responsible for so much that's driving climate change, that if we logically, if we modify what we're doing, our impact will be either greater on climate change or or lesser on climate change. And we are the ones who have to decide that we as a people, we as a species on this rock, uh, you know, with water all around hurtling through space around the sun. So, of course, as you know, I've talked about veganism so many times and being primarily for animal rights. And so it's not going to be just about climate change in that way, right? It, it Going vegan has the potential to transform entire industries. It can transform our food production. It can transform fashion. Sustainable fashion is so important because so much of it is thrown away. Or of course, animals, skins and fur are used in fashion, which is, you know, just the very idea of wearing a dead corpse on on my body is, well, it's an anathema, but uh, it, it, if you go vegan, it, the whole industry can be transformed. 
and an agricultural system that prioritizes regenerative practices where sustainable farming methods can flourish and biodiversity can thrive. So by shifting towards this kind of plant-based or vegan agriculture, we can protect habitats, we can preserve species, and we can cultivate a harmonious coexistence with nature, nature being all the plant matter and all the animals all over the planet. So the the future of uh, sort of the of veganism, the prospects of veganism also extend to innovative solutions that are emerging in the realm of alternative proteins, right? There are so many, so many different possibilities when it comes to uh, alternate sources of protein. And we can undergo just like just like a, a caterpillar undergoes a transformative journey to become a butterfly. I think we're witnessing a similar transformation in the food industry. We've got uh, vegan and plant-based meats, cultured meats, which I personally don't believe in cultured meats, uh, but <laughs> because it's still taken from the animal. But there are innovative alternatives that are reshaping our understanding of what's possible. And if you want to see that, check out Chef Guy Vaknin's work uh, at at Anixi and also at Coletta and at Willow and at Beyond Sushi. He's uh, Chef Guy Vaknin on Instagram. They're doing amazing work with some of this uh, plant-based meat. It's unbelievable and incredibly delicious. So these advancements not only offer delicious, as I said, and nutritious options, but they also reduce the need for resource-intensive animal agriculture. And of course, they reduce greatly the suffering and torture of billions of animals every year. So one of the things that I think that we need to look at is that it's crucial to recognize that change starts with us as individuals, as people. Each meal you choose, each product you purchase is an opportunity to contribute to a more sustainable world. And if we become conscious consumers, if we support businesses and initiatives that align with our values, we send a powerful message that there is a demand for ethical, eco-friendly alternatives. And we can also engage in conversations, we can share knowledge, we can inspire others to join the movement and we can become advocates for, for ecological sustainability and conservation and for veganism. And, and that way we can amplify our impact and create a ripple effect of positive change. So I invite you to educate your friends and your family and your community about the benefits of this kind of lifestyle and the potential it holds for a brighter future for all of us. I really want to sort of stress that it's not just for people. It's not just for animals. It's for all of us, for the planet as a whole. And I, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. The planet actually will be just fine. No matter what happens until four and a half billion years from now, until the sun does what it does, the planet's going to be just fine, right? When the sun decides to either go supernova or become a red giant, they say that the first three or four planets will be taken up with it. But that's four and a half billion years from now. Humans and all of us will likely be long, long gone, but the planet will be just fine for kajillions of years. So when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm talking about in even, perhaps even in geologic timescales, which are longer than human timescales, but certainly human timescales. If we look at it with the next 50 years, what kind of world do we want to be living in in that 50 years, right? I, I really... I really want to look at that. What kind of world do you want to live in in 2070 or even in 2050 or 2030? What kind of world do you want to be living in? That's the question to ask yourself, right? Do you want to be able to see trees when you go outside? Do you want to be able to breathe the air without a gas mask or drink the water without filtering it? Do you want to? If no, then you're probably not even listening to this show but if yes, then there are things that we all need to do pretty much right now. We can make small incremental steps and changes right now, today. Leave an animal off your plate today. And it will make significant changes in the days and weeks and months and years to come. It just will. All right. So as I conclude this season, this series, and this Friday episode of the Vegan Life Solutions episodes. I, I want to I say thank you to you. If you've joined me on this journey, I really, your curiosity, your support, your willingness to explore the intersections of veganism and ecological conservation 
those are going to drive us closer to a harmonious coexistence with our planet. If even one of you who's listening does this, and, and I would love to hear from you, actually, now that I've said that, I would love to hear if you go, you know what, I'm going to leave an animal off my plate today. I'm going to go see if what else is out there to eat. Uh, try it. If you try it, I would love for you to let me know. Uh, there's a speak pipe little uh, you can leave me a voicemail and it turns it into an MP3. And literally, if you say, Hey, I tried it, I will put you right on the podcast. I, I would love, I would love, love, love to hear from anybody. If you're listening to this and you're like, I, I decided to do it. I decided to try it. Let me know. I think that would be really great because the power to shape the future lies in your hands, in my hands, in our hands collectively. And if we all embraced the transformative potential of veganism, if we recognize that every choice you make has the power to create positive change, I think together we can build a world where compassion, health, and ecological conservation thrive. Really, that's, that's the best way of saying it. It's the best way of saying it. If we do it together, the world will be transformed. Again, I want to thank you for being part of this amazing journey, actually. I just loved it. I loved talking about this stuff because I'm such a NASA nerd and I did environmental education for NASA for so long that talking about this stuff in through the lens, through the frame of veganism has really been amazing for me, too. I mean, I've been vegan for years, but it doesn't matter. There are still so much to learn always. And if you want to find out more about how you can make a difference in the realm of veganism and ecological conservation and sustainability, uh, get in touch. I'm happy to see if I can provide resources for you. I invite you to subscribe to the podcast because really I'm going to be keep I'm going to keep talking about this stuff. It's just not going to be on Fridays. It's going to be on Mondays when I'm doing some of my solo episodes, when I'm interviewing people who are basically world changers in some of these uh, industries and fields, because I want you to keep learning about, and I want to keep learning about the possibilities. What are the possibilities of us transforming ourselves and transforming our world so that we live in really <laughs> the Eden that this world could be, where it is pretty much free of suffering, where we where we can minimize how much suffering there is, how much torture there is for anybody, for any being on this planet, for any sentient being on this planet. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I actually, I should just remind you, uh, if you want to join the Patreon community and keep supporting the show, I would love it. That would be great. I have a link to the Patreon community there. And there are cool things that you can get as uh, as we go along and uh, depending on the level of support that you give to the show, this show is I'm a one woman shop, right? I I do this because I love it and I do this because I want to keep bringing creative solutions to you and I do this because I think if we all think in that in that innovative creative way, we can come up with the solutions that are going to meet those challenges. So I invite you to do that and I hope that you, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, morning, night, whatever it is. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg with the Creative Solutions Podcast saying to always remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2023. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living what you believe in. Thank you.